Sure, he's gotten little, but at least he's got a lantern. Here's a look at the McFarlane Toys. Superpowers John Stewart Green Lantern. As Green Lantern, Jon Stewart wields a power ring, which creates a protective shield around him, allows him to fly, and generates hard light energy constructs in forms of anything he imagines. Before we get a closer look at the superpowers Jon Stewart, let me go ahead and first bring in, somebody was going to say Lantern? No, I'm not worthy enough. But I did, however, have in my possession a tape measure, which as far as I know can only do one construct, and that is to measure something. So I'm going to make use of that and measure to the very top of John Stewart's head. One of these days, I hope to be worthy enough to get myself a lantern. I do have a lantern right now, but it only lights up my room. That's all it does. John Stewart, though, in the meantime, stands about four and a half inches in height, or the figure's about 11 and a half centimeters tall. For those that get their kicks from comparisons, let's bring a couple of comparisons right now. Here's what Jon Stewart looks like next to the previously looked at superpowers, the Batman who laughs. Here's what the figure also looks like next to Superman, being very careful not to knock the other figures down with Superman's big giant towel sized cape. And also because I happen to have this figure and I've brought him in for other comparisons before, here's what Jon Stewart looks like next to a figure that's not going to have the easiest time to stand. Here's what he looks like though next to Oh boy, is he going to stand? Here's what he looks like next to Hal. Jo whoosh, whoosh. Here's what he looks like next to Hal Jordan's Green Lantern. Also from the original Superpowers line from Kenner. Speaking of Hal Jordan, I don't have any more the lantern that went along with this figure. But if I don't end up using the one that comes in clue with John Stewart, I in fact can have it displayed with the previously looked at Hal Jordan. Uh, the thing that's only different about this is I think the original lantern that would have come in clue with the Hal Jordan would have been more of a harder plastic. This one actually, you can see with the handle, is a more softer plastic that they would have used. But still, it's a decently detailed looking uh, lantern. And again, just to bring in Hal, Hal Jordan, I'm really not going to take the one that comes in clue with John Stewart. Maybe, I don't know. Do I want to get another John Stewart simply just to get another lantern? I'm so crazy, in fact, I might end up just doing it. I just end up doing that. Anyways, though, you can technically take the lantern, although it's a little harder because the handle is softer plastic, but you can fit it into John Haljorn's hand. I want to say John Stewart again. It does fit into his hand. And I could technically stand in a lantern until I eventually find myself another John, another Hal Jordan lantern. But yeah, it does fit into his hands. And obviously, if it's going to come in clue with John Stewart, you would like to think it's going to fit into his hand. And you'd be happy to know it does fit into his hand. But again, like the handle being soft or plastic, it's just a little harder to get in there. Hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on a second. We're almost there. There we go. No, almost. There we go. All right. So it does fit into his hand. Uh, this is the only hand that's going to be good for holding the lantern. But at least the other hand, literally on the other hand, is actually going to have the green lantern ring. It's a little more simple of a ring, but it gets the job done. We all know he's wielding a, a ring, at least, by the, the fact they use the color green. It's not quite the same green, in fact, they actually use for the sleeves or the top of the shoulder area here either. Go ahead and just remove this right now. I hate to think I'm going to lose another lantern. I could probably see myself picking up another John Stewart simply. That's, that's, that's so wasteful. I'm going to pick up one simply just for an accessory. Why not? Why not? Because I'm sure the price of actually getting an actual Superpowers lantern online... It's probably going to be a lot more than me actually buying. I don't know. I think that's, uh, it's a, it's, it's excessive either way. What's not excessive though, is the detailing that they've done to John Stewart's face. That's a, that was a horrible segue. You know, I, one thing I did want to mention about these superpowers figures that I don't think up to this point, I've had the chance to really talk about is where they've drawn the line when it comes to the detailing for these figures. Because when you really think about the original superpowers figures, which again, we can bring in Hal Jordan here. There's sort of a simplicity to the way they've sculpted the figure's faces. Now, with the newer figures, they obviously didn't want to go too simple of a sculpt, but they also didn't want to make them super detailed either. They really want to stay in line with what would be, if you could believe, an extension to that original Superpowers line. And, you know, I think they sort of bridge a nice little line in between. With Jon Stewart's case, it's not like a super stylized looking Jon Stewart. But it's not a super detailed John Stewart either. I think they've found like a nice little niche corner where they've sculpted these figures just right. Like it does look obviously like it's a newer looking figure than the one we looked at before with the Hal Jordan. But you know, again, for what it is, it's actually not a bad looking in between middle mark. 
I would obviously imagine, like we've looked at the DC multiverse, John Stewart from also McFarlane's team. And that was also a lot more detailed of a figure head sculpt than what we're getting right here. Things that they've pulled back a bit to kind of add to the simplicity of it is first of all, they haven't painted his eyes. So like they've painted the pupils and they painted his eyebrows, but that's about it. Like the head sculpt is simple enough, but still conveys a pretty more modern looking head sculpt. And I like it overall. Now, obviously with these figures, they wouldn't have had any of the gimmicks. The gimmicks have now been done away with altogether. For all intents and purposes, I would imagine that's similar to Hal Jordan, which again, we would have just squeezed the legs and he would have brought his arm out to show off his Green Lantern ring. I would like to think that if a gimmick was still in place here with Jon Stewart, it would be of a very similar type of idea. You probably would squeeze his legs together and his arm probably would just be coming up very similar in nature. I'm still a little bummed out the fact that these newer figures don't have a gimmick in place. I would imagine it probably wouldn't be that expensive to add a gimmick. That, you know, obviously you're still getting the sort of simple articulation that goes along with these figures. You know, again, like if they're going to be bringing back in the line, which again, I, I'd like to hope is successful enough because I am really kind of getting more into this line, the more figures that they continue to release. But I do wish though, at some point at, you know, initially constructing the idea of a superpowers coming back, like a resurgence of this line. I wish one of the things that could have also been an idea thrown out there was to include the art to throw in the gimmick. And I'm sure it was probably that something that they considered, but of course, just the tooling of the molds. And of course, to have to include things inside the bodies would have probably got a little bit more expensive. What we still though get is a pretty detailed looking figure. I mean, even like his emblem there in the middle, the, the actual Green Lantern logo actually does look quite clean, quite sharp. There's no mess of paint. And even things like I would expect things to be a mess on paint, like the green is very nicely handled. As you can see at the front and the back of the torso. Oh, while the rest of the body's figure, the body's costume is mostly just all in black. He does have the green boots. He doesn't have pickles in the undersides of his feet, whereas the original Hal Jordan would have had pickles, although none of the figures really had included display stands, but the original figures would have had at least peg holes. Uh, Articulation-wise on this guy, it's about the same as what the original superpowers from Kenner stuff would have been. So the head does rotate all the way around. The arms, in this case, rotate all the way around. And again, like there's no elbow articulation. You're basically just getting regular swiveled arms. And for that, you would only only be really getting five points of articulation if you counted the head, the shoulders, and then the and then thighs. But the original superpowers figures also would have had a single hinge in the knee. So that's something that also carries over to this newer line as well. You know, again, probably not stated as well as I wanted to think. When I was thinking in my head, I knew exactly how I wanted to say it. Probably didn't come out exactly the way I wanted to say it. But again, like I, one thing I do like about this line that I think does quite well for the line is again, like when you bring back in like the superpower stuff, again, it probably would have been a bad idea to bring back in Hal Jordan knowing how bad he had the time to stand. But you know, again, like where we looked at with the original 80s stuff and then now what we're getting here in the 2000s with McFarlane's team doing the superpowers line again, you know, again, you can't expect them to do like the simplicity of what made the, the the original line so charming. The original line's charm also came from the fact that they had the gimmick. With now doing away the gimmick, I do like that they've modernized the heads, but not too far the extreme where it doesn't look like a superpowers figure anymore. I think for most part, you probably could pair the two together on the shelf. You obviously can know right away that this is the older vintage figure. This is the newer figure. But, you know, again, being the body proportions, the way that they are, and the articulation being about the same, you could buy into the idea that this is simply just an extension, a resurgence, which is exactly what it is, of the original Superpowers line from Kenner. You know, if I was to run the idea past my daughter about buying another John Stewart simply just to use the lantern for Hal Jordan, she would say, you know, Dad, that's bad choices on your part. And she would be right. The idea of even buying another figure simply just to pillage a part that actually comes with him and use it for another older figure. I think instead, like my daughter would say, poor choices. I think I'm going to save that money instead and can only hope that at some point, I mean, they already have this mold anyways for the body of Jon Stewart, that they probably would easily use the body again and give us an updated Hal Jordan to which that figure will also come include with a lantern. My daughter's very smart. Poor choices. No, no, not this time. No, dad's not making poor choices. I'm not going to buy another John Stewart. If anything, if anything, I would buy another John Stewart or any one of the other superpowers figures that we've already had a look at simply just to keep them inside the card, which is one thing I really like about the cards is that they look like the original vintage cards, obviously introducing brand new characters in the case here of John Stewart, obviously introducing also brand new artwork to go along with those newer characters. That's the only reason and only logic I would have to buy another set of these figures simply so I can keep them sealed and put them on the wall. I don't think that's bad choices. I don't think those are poor choices. That is just enjoying and appreciating the artwork that McFarlane's team put into these in the first place. You know, overall, again, I like the look of Jon Stewart. 
He again bridges the gap nicely between what would be a retro figure and what would be a modern figure, a key, of course, keeping the retro articulation in place, and unfortunately doing away with one thing that really gave the charm to the original, the original Kenner Superpowers line was the gimmick, the feature that all the figures had. Again, I probably would imagine that the fe feature on John Sturt would in fact be exactly the same because they only had like three different gimmicks. You rotate the waist, you squeeze the legs, or you squeeze the arms. You squeeze the arms for Flash, you squeeze the legs for John Stewart, or in the case of Green Lantern's Hal Jordan. Yeah, I do wish that still the gimmicks could have still retained when it came to re bringing back this line for a brand new generation of collectors. But still overall, as it goes for a figure to be put on the shelf, I'm really, really liking this line so far. Not poor choices at all by continuing to pick up these figures. If McFarlane are going to keep wanting to put out brand new Superpowers figures, then the guy behind the camera, that's me. That's me. I'm going to keep wanting to pick these up. But what do you guys think, though, of Jon Stewart? Is this a figure that you would like to pick up and add to your collection? Let me know down below your thoughts on the Superpowers Jon Stewart. And if you have been collecting any of the Superpowers figures. Um, this one also is the second of the three new figures that I just picked up for superpowers. The other one being Flash. I don't know why I kept Flash for the end. I think I wanted Flash to be the last because I think he's my favorite of the three. But, you know, honestly, having now opened up Batman Who Laughs and now having just recently opened up Jon Stewart, I like him the sculpt in all three of these. So whether Flash will end up being my favorite of what the three we've looked at, you'll just definitely have to stick around and see my review of the Flash. Shameless plugging of the review of the Flash. Uh, if you guys certainly enjoyed this video, why hit it with a like. If you love the content, yes, you guys are seeing and do want to stick around for the Superpowers Flash, then make sure you're hitting the crucial subscribe button down below and the equally crucial bell notification so you're going to get reminders every single time a new video posts. And had I already tipped my hat to you, the viewing audience, yes, we are going to be looking at, yes, we are going to be looking at the Superpowers Flash. Not poor choices at all. I'm going to have to tell my daughter. I'm, I, I'm only going to be buying another couple of these just so I can put them on the shelf. I'm sure she can understand why I would want to put them on the shelf because daddy likes to look at the artwork. Not poor choices at all. Lots of stuff coming away, guys. So as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.